that bitch got. There we go. All righty. Welcome to another edition of Neighborhood Watch. I'm Matt. And I'm Pat. Happy Tuesday. I'm Matt. I'm Abe. What's going on, San Ramon? He's Matt. I'm Matt. I'm Brett. <laughs> All right. Awesome, guys. Uh, everybody, thank you for joining another week of the show. Uh, tonight's distinguished guest is Greg Carr. And we're going to give Greg the proper introduction that he deserves. Uh, Greg was born in Albany, California, Bay Area native, in 1948. But he grew up in South Central LA, then Santa Clara. 1969 graduate of UC Berkeley. He joined the Navy in 65 and did four years at Berkeley in the NROTC program. Commissioned officer in the Navy in 1969. Service in Republic of Vietnam in 70 and 71 in one Corps and four Corps, the Delta on WW2 LST. Operated up the Mekong and Basak rivers to Cambodia border, as well as along the South China Sea coast. His younger brother was, all in, was also in the four Corps and the RBN at the same time as crew chief of the Army UH-1 helicopters. Wow. He did two tours back to back, his brother. Uh, Greg was chief engineer on that ship. The ship also operated in Westpac from South Korea to Cape Kamu in RVN. Awesome. Yeah. And in 1971 to 73, uh, damage control officer in the OODF on destroyer squadron flagship, which operated destroyer screen flagship for carrier task group in Caribbean, North Atlantic, and above the Arctic Circle, Mediterranean, Baltic, and radar picket duty off the coast of Israel in the 1973 Arab-Israeli War. Fought promoted to lieutenant over one year early. Then left the Navy in 73 as Lieutenant 03 after completing a four-year obligation. Licensed as a professional civil engineer in California from 1980 to date. Worked for PG&E and it's Canada to California Natural Gas Transmission Subsidiary. Director of the University of California Office of the President, responsible for policy and programs related to all capital facilities design, construction, physical plant maintenance program, and environmental compliance for the entire UC system. International management consultant for power plant heavy mechanical projects, lived, work, and worked, and traveled in 43 countries, wow. mentored international management executives, advised and consultant to clients on their international programs like applied materials, ran construction projects in many countries, consultant to the city of San Francisco, responsible for review and approval of infrastructure development and permitting approval for Mission Bay and Hunters Point redevelopment projects, the two largest in San Francisco history. Co-partner in several Mexican companies, uh, commercial and residential foundation construction in Mexico, heavy construction crane management services in Mexico, uh, importation of construction materials and uh, petrochemicals in, into Mexico, and manufacturing and exportation of foundation formwork systems from Mexico into the USA. Expert witness, firearms, sound, uh, sound propagation, and uh, complaints filed against professional engineers. Greg is a former member of San Ramon and council member from 91 to 95. He's the chairman of Save Our Hills, a San Ramon environmental group responsible for the, for the city's first successful initiative ordinance for hillside and creek protection. He's a member, board of, director, board of directors, Western Council of Construction Consumers, chairman of the board, Doherty Valley Regional Fire Authority, member, board of directors, Central Contra Costa County Solid Waste Authority, city of San Ramon redevelopment, HC board member and finance committee member, and he is also the campaign chairman for a, a part of Madredi for mayor. Okay, awesome. welcome to the show, Greg. I'm going to jump right into the first question. So, what are some of the issues with ballot harvesting? Well, ballot harvesting is a is a tool that can be used to improve the collection of your ballots, and it can also be misused. It's, it's the you know, potential misuse of it that is of concern. Uh, case in point, it's, it's somebody comes around to your door and says, hey, I'll take your ballot and put it into the post office box or, or the county collection box. Well, you don't know who the person is, and you don't know what they're doing and how they're going to handle it. 
And the thing, you guys, if you get a chance, hold up your ballot, okay? Fold it over as received, slip it inside, hold it up, and if you look close enough, you can see who you voted for president. All right? So the, the, the Ill, ill-contrived folks in this are, you know, potentially going to see this, oh, geez, this guy voted for, you know, Donald Trump. Or conversely, if they're conservative, oh, this guy voted for Joe Biden and, boom, into the trash can. And, and so uh, that's one way of doing it. Uh, folks who are in, in assisted living facilities, <laughs> and I haven't got there yet, so, so uh, are, 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 you know, hard-pressed to take it. They can't go and show up at a ballot place. And, and, you know, it's important to vote absentee for, for them. But some of them aren't in the altogether, okay? And some people will come around and say, hey, I'll help you fill out your ballot and I'll take and drop it off. And those are two examples. So my only suggestion to the folks listening to your program is – that is the most important thing you will do as a citizen. Fill that out and turn it in. It's, it's, it's yours, nobody else's. And I would urge you to, to do it yourself if you can, or have someone help you who you trust if you can't. And then you drop it off, either at the you know, post office box, you know, preferably at the post office, or in a county sanctioned you know, drop box, like right now, I drop pine off in front of the community mm-hmm. center. Now, the state of California has allowed, okay, political parties to, to set their own boxes up. So you've got the Democrats who have their box, Republicans have their box, but you don't know how they handle it once they open it up mm-hmm. and collect it. So uh, treat it as a sacred trust because it's what sets us apart from everybody else. And if you don't keep that sacred trust and make sure that you fill it out and it gets in the correct hands, you only have yourself to blame. So, okay. Yeah, how many, how a, many states is, is that legal in ballot harvesting? I, I, I don't know, Brett. I, I, I haven't. <laughs> I asked that. Did that. <laughs> California. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 it's spectral. But, of course, yeah. in California, everybody is voting by mail. All right? Now, here, I'm, I'm you know, glad that you, you interjected, Brett. Thank you. Because it gives me a chance to give a statistic. I keep in contact with eight officer friends from UC Berkeley, from Admiral down to Lieutenant. And of the eight of us, three of us in California received ballots for a deceased parent. Mm. So, so add that up. If you're not trustworthy, but there's an opportunity to, you know, poach three votes, right? It's a real problem. Wow. Interesting, and and right, thank you. and it's it's just a small group of friends of mine. So so if you if you e- extrapolate at that experience, and perhaps you've had your own, you can say, oh my God, there's all kinds of potential for you know hanky panky. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go to the next question. Yeah, we don't know anything about hanky panky, but um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We uh, well, and we also learned in an earlier show that it's also not illegal, which is kind of crazy, right? I think. That- well, apparently, apparently, having the the independent boxes put up by a party is now in California legal. Hmm. And what's happened is that the you know supermajority controlled state pushed that through, and now the minority is putting it back in their face. So, you know, well, let's, right. change, let's change some things up for, I've got another question for you. Okay. So, you know, uh, do incumbents running for mayor keep their city council seats if they were to lose? Yes. 
Okay, currently there are six people running for mayor. Mm -hmm. Two are incumbents, four are not. Okay, the two incumbents have two more years to go on their city council seats. So if they lose, they're still there. And the thing that's important to know in San Ramon is that our system of government, or I should say governance, um, allows each of the five council members, including the mayor, have a single vote. You have a 20% shot. It's the same. There is no differentiation because you're the mayor. Okay. So, so the two incumbents can vote and continue to vote for the next two years if they don't lose. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So that, that poses another good question. Like if an incumbent wins, say one of them wins the mayor's seat, how does the vacant seat get filled for council? <laughs> Well, excuse my laugh. I mean, I have to chuckle because I've been doing this for 33 years. Mm -hmm. uh, um, there are two ways that it can be done. The first one is that there can be a special election at the next regularly scheduled time to have the city send out ballots and everybody in the city can vote for that person to complete the two-year See, right? Or that person can be appointed by the, uh, you know, the five people on the council. And that is what's happened in the past. Okay. Okay. It's happened both ways in the past. So say if you've got a council who is, is comprised of people who are all thinking one way, right, but you notice my hand, um, and, and, and then there's four of them left, and if they have to vote for somebody, probability tells me at least that they will probably vote for somebody of, of, of their own ilk, their own mm -hmm. kind, that their own views, and that's what I've seen happen in town years ago. So uh, all you get is more of the same. Now, if you like the current city council, that's great. If you don't, it doesn't give you a chance to get somebody in who can be a spokesperson for the opposition. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, I've always felt, strenuously, vehemently so, that it's important for governments, starting at the first level, ours, city government, to have a spectrum of opinion because you get a dialogue. If all five are all the same, you 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 know kind of get what happened on the approval of the city walk plan. Oh, it's great! It's great! It's great! Times five, and nobody even thought about well, maybe there's some things that could be improved, and it was five zero. Nobody said hey. Maybe we ought to take a look at X, Y, and Z. So it, anyway, that's what happens, guys. Interesting. Interesting. What uh, regarding the city walk? I know there were some. And is it is that still going on? Is that is there still another hearing on that coming up? No, oh, that's a done deal, bro. Okay. I thought there was. Isn't there not? Is there something that they're still refining? Or, oh, or it's a done deal. <coughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Okay, the thing that the city council approved only because it was appealed to them, and I can explain that if you guys are interested, mm -hmm. but the thing that they approved is the concept plan, you know, call it master plan, you know, all the architectural drawings and everything's nice and all the generalities. Now what's going on is, is the development agreement. It's like a contract between the developer okay, sunset, and the city, the city council, on the specifics of how it will be developed, you know, uh, down to who pays for what, uh, how the fees are handled, a uh, number of, you know, acres of park, how, how the traffic mitigations are taken care of. Mm -hmm. All of those things get spelled out 
in lurid, <laughs> lurid detail in this development agreement. And then it's signed. It's signed by the city council. Uh, well, it's, 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 it's heard by the city council. And if passed, it's signed by the mayor. And then that is the guiding document for how the project gets you know, constructed and built. So currently what's going on, as a matter of fact, tonight, I, I don't know if it's being heard by the, you know, the current planning commission, but they heard it, they heard it some time back. And um, there are some things that are not very pretty in that, like, like who pays for what. So if you guys get a chance, read that thing and form your own view. Um, You'll be surprised at what goes on because what it does is it indicates to the reader, the citizen, you, the interested party, exactly how these things are done and what the developers can extract from the city. And you might see some things that you don't like. Okay, so I would urge all your viewers, go online, find the thing and yeah, it's lengthy. But go over it and ask yourself, how do you feel about that? Okay. Good answer. Okay. Thanks. I got, I have another question. Yeah. Um, just your experience um, on the city council and mayor. Have we ever had six people running for mayor before? And is there any thought of like doing a runoff? If we, I mean, I don't know what the limit is. I mean, what if 50 people ran, but. With, with six people, someone could win it with like 16, 7% of the vote. It's a, possible. A, very, a, a small, small minority of, of the people could vote yeah, and make someone yeah. a mayor. Uh, currently, there, there is no runoff provision. Hmm. So whoever of the six gets the highest votes, even if it's less than 50%, wins. Wow. Okay. Now, in I terms of the first question, um, I, I cannot remember – uh, if we've ever had six running for the mayor, I don't know. I know that there have been six for school, uh, city council seats, okay? In, oh. in, 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 in you know, 1991, in the old days, okay, the mayor was appointed by the council members, okay? We've only had two elected mayors, Abram and Clarkson. And the third one's coming up. Everybody before, like me, was appointed oh. by their peers. So um, I don't know if, if we've had six for mayor. I don't think so. Yeah, that's a big number. Okay. So, yeah. so Greg, yeah. Greg, as, as, as a Parnas campaign manager and for the undecided voters out there, why is she the best choice for mayor of San Ramon? Well, okay. I'm highly biased, obviously. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. That's... But the thing okay. I can tell you is, is she is highly intelligent. She has been involved in the community, the clubs, uh, all kinds of things, at several committees in the city um, for, I think, about the last three plus years. And, and she spends all her time doing these things. And she's not even elected. It's all pro bono. It, okay, that's the first one. She has a good heart. She does not have a black heart. And there are those out there. Okay. But she is a good person. She cares about the community. And, and to her, the community is the residents who vote, us, and the small businesses, because the small businesses form the fabric of the community. It's, it's not the, the huge the companies that have a lot of dollars. It's, it's, you know, the mom and pop. It's the guy who's got a printing shop, say, okay? And, and so, so, so these are the people she cares about. And she truly does. Um, and, and she is trying to to improve the transparency of what goes on. And we have not had a lot of transparency. 
in the past handful of years, at least in my view. Okay, those on the council would argue that vehemently, of course, when they say, oh, you know what you're talking about, Greg, but, but uh, there's not. Uh, case in point, if the council had been concerned about the citizens' viewpoint of this city walk project, they should have mailed a flyer, an informational flyer, to every house in the city and said, hey, guys, here's what's coming down. Here's the plan. We're going to have all these meetings, planning commission, et cetera, et cetera. Come on down. Here's the dates. And, and state, unequivocally, uh, if you don't show up, you got yourself to blame. But they didn't do that. We just went through the process. And on that project, by the way, okay, the state SB 330 that was in effect in January of this year forces upon the city, you cannot have more than five public hearings. So the city had three formal public hearings with the planning commission. Now, if the planning commission approves the project and a city council member does not call to have it heard before the council or a citizen does not appeal it, it's a done deal. So just stop and think about that. A project, 27-year project, 4,500 homes, big, is approved by three, well, three out of five or five city planning commissioners that are appointees of the council. They're not responsible to you and me. The city council is because we can oust them. But the planning commissioners aren't. It's almost like they're untouchable. So, so several people, Jim Blickenstaff, my wife Joyce Carr, Aparna, recalled this, and 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 appealed it. And my wife Joyce, who is a retired school teacher at Bollinger Canyon, she cut the check for the non-refundable twenty-five hundred dollars because uh, that's where her heart is, okay? You try doing that sometime. <laughs> that's a big deal to me because, because for a retired teacher, that $2,500 doesn't come easily, and it didn't. But, okay? So, 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 so that was the only way that the council could be forced to hear it. And they had <laughs> two more sessions, hearings that they could have had. Mm -hmm. And they chose not to. They sat on their hands. Why? Because it's a, it's a political expedient. You don't have to go on the... Really? You don't have to be seen as for it or against it. Mm -hmm. well, so by having it appealed, it forced them to hear it, to have public input, and to vote on it. Something they should have done as a matter of course. Wow. Very interesting. Really, really good insight there. Um, yeah. We could probably go on and on and talk about that for yeah. quite a while. Well, we can go all day, topics. guys. You know, perhaps I'll yeah. have that beer. Well, yeah. we <laughs> are, Thank you. Yeah. We'll do a beer another time. And uh, yeah. thanks for attending. Great to okay, have you. Okay, guys. On. Thanks for having me. Appreciate thanks, it. And, you know, thanks, keep Greg. the dialogue up. What you're doing is great. Okay. Absolutely. Appreciate yeah, you coming you. on. And, uh, okay. Take thanks. care. Look right. forward to talking again. Have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Take care, right. Greg. Bye. Bye bye, guys.